Hey, what's going on YouTube? Uh, today I've got a nice unboxing uh, from one of the channels I support. It's uh, Coin Crew. I actually won quite a few auctions, so I'm going to be opening up this live. I uh, have not looked inside. Obviously, I saw what I was buying, um, but I've not looked inside, so get a little live reaction here. It's uh, pretty much silver. It's all numismatic. And let's see what's inside. Nice thing about um, where they're at, which is in Michigan. And they, they own their own coin shop. They have their own YouTube channel. Um, they're fairly close. I'm in Illinois. So anytime I buy something from them, I get it pretty quickly. Okay, so let's see what we got. Uh, I think I know what that is. All right, let's start with this guy. So it's a barber. Let me get that opened up here. And you can obviously clearly see the prices I paid. A little zoom in action here. Very nice, high quality 1916 uh, Denver minted barber. So I think for 53 bucks, it's a nice pickup. Uh, this is, and these typically go uh, in AU, you know, if it's an AU or extra fine condition. Uh, definitely worth more than the 53 bucks. So let's take a closer peek here. So I don't really get a lot of nice barbers. I've only gotten them through uh, purchasing junk silver, but this one does have a nice look to it. Um, you can actually see the eyes, the nose, the mouth. Um, so funny thing about this engraver, uh, I believe is uh, Charles Barber. Um, so his dad, so Charles Barber was like the sixth engraver or whatever of the U.S. Mint. And that's why these are called Barbers, because he designed these coins. Obviously, they were on the dime. Um, and uh, the quarter, which I have, am holding in my hands, and the uh, half dollar. And he also designed, or he also helped uh, open up the Denver Mint. But anyways, his dad, William Barber, was the fifth engraver of the U.S. Mint. So talk about back in the day... Um, nepotism <laughs> which uh over here from you know being in the suburbs of chicagoland uh chicago actually had a had a law like 20 years ago that had to be passed a uh, bunch of people got uh, fired from their jobs because they realized that uh, it was their relative that uh, got in the job so they were like hiring their cousins uncles and all that stuff anyways so but back in um whenever this was you know the the early 1900s, um, obviously nepotism was absolutely fine. Like no problem. Anyways. Um, so Charles Barber designed the barbers obviously. And, uh, anyways, they only minted, uh, was it 6.5 million of these coins? They're harder to find in this nice condition. So I think this will be well worth over the 53 bucks I paid, but I just, I bought, bought these coins mainly for variety and some history. Uh, instead of the Morgans, 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 and more Morgans, um, so next one is a 1913, uh, Buffalo and, uh, Charles Barber. I think that's his name. It is Charles. Yeah. Charles E. Barber. Um, he was also involved in not the design of this coin, but kind of like the re, uh, like redoing of this coin. So there's a type one and there's a type two. So this is a 1913 Buffalo. Oh, dropped on the floor. Discount. Um, and the way you can tell if it's a type two is if you look at the shelf. So right, the shelf is basically that the buffalo stands on right above the word five cents. If it has a very thick shelf, that is called a type two. So Charles Barber came in and said, you know what? These are going to get worn down. People aren't going to be able to see the five cents. So he came up with the type two and put that shelf here on the bottom. But this is a very nice example uh, for 18 bucks. I don't really collect a ton of buffaloes, but I've never had one this old that had this much information on the coin. Usually they're completely slick or the date you can't even make out. And uh, they're not in this nice a condition. So it's got some spots, but whatever. I thought it was a nice pickup for 18 bucks. Again, this was all auction style. So um, I was just looking for some different coins that I haven't had in my hands in a while or haven't had in my hands at all. <clears throat> Uh, next one here uh, is the 1893, I believe, Columbia Columbia Exposition from the World's Fair of Chicago. So 
They made these in 1892 and 1893. And this is an interesting coin. So I guess back in the day, the the people that were putting on these, you know, well, the World's Fair was huge, right? Oh, the Chicago Exposition was huge. So uh, they got together with the U.S. Mint and they said, you know what? Um, we need to help fund this uh, $5 million event or whatever it was back in the day in 1893. So they went to the U.S. Mint and the U.S. Mint, uh, they came up with a plan like, all right, uh, these are 50 cent pieces. So what we're going to do is we're going to have only these exclusively at the uh, uh, exposition uh, or the Chicago um, exposition. And we're going to sell these to the general public for a dollar. So they made 2.5 million of these and they figured if we sell each one for a dollar, they'll make their 2.5 million really easily. Well, that was a flop. They only sold 200,000. The rest ended up in circulation um, or were melted because these are 90% silver. So very cool coin. I've never really, I've seen a ton of these, but I've never held one in my hands. And usually they're probably not this nice, but this was a regularly circulated coin back then. Again, for the Exposition, World's Columbian Exposition, Chicago, uh, but it was kind of a bust. Not the fair itself, but the fact that they were only able to sell 200,000 of these. So that's a cool coin. Um, they made an 1892 as well. The 1892 is, uh, what do they make, like 950,000 of those. And then uh, this particular 1893, they made about 1.5 million. So um, I probably paid up for that a little bit. What the heck, what the heck did I pay for this one? I don't even remember. Lot seven. <clears throat> oh, it was 30 bucks. So, I don't know. It's a nice coin for 30 bucks. Still got the details here on the on the world. So, again, another one of these coins. I've seen a ton of them online. I haven't had in my hands. Uh, this next one, I've, I've only seen a few times. And um, this is a 1923 San Francisco Mint. Uh, what the heck is this called? This is another commemorative 50 cent. So it's the Monroe Doctrine uh, Centennial coin. And <clears throat> so check this out. So they, same concept. They didn't learn their lesson in 1893. So 1923, uh, they, you know, film and stuff was invented. And they actually had the very first California film uh, annual um uh, there's like some, some kind of annual um, motion picture uh, event and same concept. So they didn't make, you know, 2.5 million of them like the Columbia one or um, the Chicago exposition one, but they made 300,000 of these. And again, their plan was to have these at the event uh, for 50 cents and sell them for a dollar to raise money to support the actual fair itself. Um, what makes this coin very unique besides there being two heads um on the front, which is uh, Monroe and Adams on the half dollar here. Um, but what makes the back kind of unique with the art itself is the shapes of the continents. Uh, if you notice, they're kind of like in the shape of ladies, you know, with the United States and uh, the Americas below. So um, very interesting coin. They only made 300,000 of these. Um, I believe, you know, this, this is a nice, really nice um, version of one. Again, Coin Crew does a nice job with their coins, plus showing the coins too. Like you're not getting fake pictures of a coin, you know, you're getting a YouTube video of it. But I think for $32, uh, this is a nice pickup, again, for a very low mintage. So again, another cool, again, it's 90% silver, just like a half dollar, 1964 you get today, but a very cool piece. Okay, let me pause this uh, for the next one so I can open this one up. And the reason is, you know, Angel went a little psycho with... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> with packing this um she went crazy with the tape but um what what i really enjoy about their channel too is besides besides you know they're they're entertaining is that uh, they do own their own kind coin shop you are supporting them but you're not just like you know throwing money at them getting clothes or something or whatever you're actually getting um collectibles so uh, this was a really good pickup. So for $62, um, I was able to pick this up. Again, it was an auction. And yeah, let's take a look at it. So it, obviously it's a PCGS um, AU58. A little bit of toning down the middle there. Let me get in a little bit deeper here. 
Uh, so this is the one and only uh, Denver minted 1921 uh, Morgan. And I believe it's a beautiful, beautiful frosted version. It It's pretty rare to get a AU that's frosty. But obviously, you know, they look at the wear here on the fields, on the face. I don't know. This this seems to be like a really low grade for this quality of a coin. And the D, which is for Denver, is very, very tiny. They're hard to pick up. So a lot of times it's hard to pick those up on people's photos online. But um, so again, this goes all the way back to Barber. So Charles Barber, not his dad, William Barber, uh, helped open the Denver Mint back in the day. So this is, for some reason, the only... Denver minted Morgan, besides the commemorative one, uh, the 2021 commemorative Denver Morgan, which the U.S. Mint really screwed up, which is why the MS70s go for, I think, over 500 bucks, maybe over a thousand, because they just blew up so many of these. But again, for 50, the heck did I pay for this? 50 or 62 bucks. Uh, that is, that's almost like gray sheet. So this, this definitely. I think is an $85, $90 coin. But anyways, so I'll have this listed in my eBay store. Um, maybe for a little bit more. I got to see what the Denver Minted Morgans are, um, are online are available for, what their people are asking and what they look like. But this is really nice. Again, I, I've I had a, I've had a lot of 1921s in my hand, um, including Denver Mints. I've never had a frosted one like this. So very nice coin. Anyways, guys, I appreciate uh, like, share, and subscribe. And um, if you want to check out my eBay store, it is in the description. Um, I have lots of stuff available, and I appreciate you guys watching. Uh, again, a little, little, some a little different. Again, I, I couldn't resist, right? I had to get a Morgan, but um, uh, with this older um, coinage, numismatic, uh, especially these two guys here. Um, I mean, this one you've probably seen, but not too many people have seen this one. Um, only 300,000 of those minted and that to me, people have seen a 1913 uh, Buffalo type two with the, uh, the Ridge there or a barber, um, that you can actually see the eyes and the face and it's not all smeared out and just like an outlook and even the shield, everything's real clear in there. So I appreciate you guys watching. Please like, share, subscribe. Everyone have a good rest of your day. Bye-bye.